Hello, well I'm going to be doing some whittling today. So I'm going to be whittling a little bird, a little bird called a blue tit. And I see quite a lot of blue tits around here, so it's nice to actually have a go at whittling one. But at the moment I can hear seagulls above me. Anyway, you don't need many tools, so you just need a whittling knife and probably a saw and axe and that's about it. Well the first thing you need to do is make yourself a paper pattern. So I've got my little blue tit here, they're tiny birds. And all I've done, I went onto um, a couple of books, onto the web, found a profile I thought looked quite nice, and just printed it off, drew around it, and hey presto, you have your template. And it's the easiest way, just find a profile picture that you think looks quite nice. So <laughs> I've gone for the side profile, um, probably the thing that makes the blue tit slightly stand out is its little tiny beak, and the whole thing's pretty small really, nice little tail. So going to be fiddly to carve, being small you could do something larger like a thrush or a blackbird, it really doesn't matter, whatever birds you have in your area perhaps. Anyway, I've got a nice bit of wood, so you could just um, use a bit of firewood. I've got a nice bit of log here, a bit of lime as it happens, that would be very nice. And you can also buy sort of blocks of wood as well for carving, for little chip carving and whittling. Um, so you could always use one of those, so plenty of options. Tool rise, I'm just going to use uh, a whittling knife, a couple of knives, uh, probably my axe and a saw, and that's pretty well it. So you don't need much, it's not expensive to get into this. It's one of the joys, and I mean, I'm sitting at the moment beside a firewood store. There's no reason why I couldn't really be using some of that, it would just be a bit tougher because it's seasoned wood. This is totally green, off the tree, and the advantage of using the green wood is it's a lot easier to carve. People get worried about cracks as it dries, but actually I've been carving a bird, popping it straight in my airing cupboard, and it dried within like a week. It's amazing, amazingly quick. And you can tell by the noise because it's not so sort of loud as you hit it. Anyway, let's get this cut, let's draw a profile. So I'm actually using the base of my spoon, spoon mule here as a workbench, it's quite useful. Got my little paper cut out, just going to allow a quarter inch, six millimetres each end, not very much. Mark that and then cut it off. Being green wood you'll want a sort of non Foggy type saw, ideally for cutting this. So this piece of wood, it started to sort of crack where it's been drying a little bit. And you can see a very faint line going across here. I want to avoid the absolute core of the tree for this. So I'm going to do a little axe cut about there and I'll be able to get one blue tip down there. And then I think if I just act slightly to that side, I'll then maybe get two blue tits the other side. We'll see. But I'm avoiding that central core just because I feel there'll be a bit more movement on the wood in the center. If I try and get it a little bit wet, a bit wider, there may be a little bit less, who knows. So I can cut this down with my ax. Do that. Just need to hit it with something. I think this may do it. Yeah. So that gives me a nice little section there for whittling. And I'll do the same thing. Just go slightly to one side and get another. I'll keep that and maybe make something else at some point. So that's my other piece. Now I think I can probably cut this one about there, maybe, or I could cut it there. Let's have a look at my little blue tit. Yeah, actually, if I cut it down the middle, I'll get a blue tit each side. 
So what I'm going to do, try not to waste my wood, <laughs> is I'll cut it there. I may even get a blue tit out of that piece as well. So that's that already and what I'll do next of all I'll just take that bit off the end there so it just means there's less knife work then so probably take that about there and ditto take these bits off because I don't need these should really have got my mallet out, um, but hey. Right, so I've now got a few nice little blocks for carving my blue tits, whittling them. I always say carving, I should say whittling. So I now want to draw around my little paper template. And what I want to do is keep the beak, which is the most delicate bit, with a nice bit of straight grain. So the grain at the moment is running in the direction of this pencil. And I want to keep that beak nicely in line with the grain so it doesn't shear off. And ditto the tail. Ideally, I want to try and keep that with a nice bit of straight grain. So just draw around. I tend to exaggerate the beak at this stage because then it's, if it does get bashed, I can sort of, you know, realign it a bit. You know, try and draw around, it's a little bit tricky because the wood is obviously, apart from being a bit damp, is quite uneven from the break. You could, if you had a saw bench or band saw, you could saw all of this quite happily. And again, I'll make the tail at the moment a little bit longer, so I can trim that and cut it later but it sort of protects it a bit. I'm using a 2B pencil, so I'm using quite a soft pencil for this. And there you are, I have my little outline of my blue tit. And I have to laugh because someone else is taking a great interest in this project. Mr. Tomcat has paid a visit. It's quite nice and sunny down here relatively. It's cold, but it's the, the warmest place at the moment. So having drawn around the shape now, I'm going to just um, axe off some of the sort of like outline. So um, I can just go along with my little hatchet axe. You could use any firewood axe for this. And just really try and get rid of some of this excess material. If you don't have an axe or you don't like axing, you could maybe use or borrow a little coping saw and you can make a little table for it which you can clamp to a bench and for example here where I'm going to have to cut down the middle I'm going to use my coping saw and just go down through there to cut those out so that's an option you can always do it's obviously better to do this on a solid bench or on a tree stump so I'm going to move over in a minute onto something where it's not all moving around. <laughs> Be a bit safer as well as e easier. <laughs> now, depending how handy you are with an axe, how many perhaps spoons you carve out would depend how close you want to go. I didn't want to push my luck on this one, so I will now use a fairly large roughing out carving knife. So one like that and that will quite quickly just get rid of the excess material on this. You can get these like safety gloves, which I find are very good. They're reasonably comfortable. Um, these have a cut level supposedly of five, which I think probably gives you some limited protection from like a side glance. It obviously won't protect you if you go and snap yourself full on but as quite a lot of sort of cuts tend to be glancing shots, it is quite a nice little safety assurance, if you like. I actually ordered a large size in these. My hands aren't particularly large, I don't think, for a bloke. So I think they've probably come up smaller, if anything. 
I probably would have almost have gone for the extra large. Anyway, gloves, little knife. Obviously, again, safety-wise, you always want to cut nicely away from yourself. And um, whoop, Tom's jumping off the wood heaps. You can just start to, obviously, quite quickly get some of this material off. So I'm just removing the bulk material at the moment. And it's very relaxing here. I've got a nice bit of sunshine now. I've got birds cheeping around. Oops. It is the difficulty actually with this when it's so small, it's actually holding it. You can see very quickly, I can get this down to roughly the outline. I'm obviously all the time cutting sort of with the grain, so do think about the grain direction as you do these cuts. If you cut against the grain, it will just dig in, be very difficult to get a nice cut. And obviously all the time, make sure that you're using the knife away from you. And it's quite good, you can sort of use your other hand to work the knife. I quite like a knife like this because the blade isn't actually too long. Quite a few of the sort of knives you get, they have a very long blade. And I've got some which I use on spoons, which they're fine. But actually for something like this, you don't need the long blade. So if you want to do detail, you can pick up a little detail knife like one of these. But um, this particular one is a P-fill, it's a number seven. So one of their little um, carving knives. I've had it for years actually, I imagine they still do them. But you can sort of like push with your thumb there a bit. And that just gives you a slightly more controlled cut. So the key thing is to make sure the whole time that that knife is not coming towards you. Yeah, carry on carving and contemplate the world. So what I'm going to do, once I've got this sort of outline a bit closer in, I will then start rounding it. But at the moment I'm just going to take it down a bit more to the actual outline. Trying to do the sort of same amount each side so that it all comes in nicely. You don't have to, I mean, nature is not exactly perfect, so one of the sort of joys of, I think, the whittling is you can be a bit sort of rough and you can still get. A pretty good effect I think. Well I like it, it's a very rustic sort of, I'm not aiming here for great perfection, it's more of a like a rustic type effect, but it's what I personally rather like. Now the beak, I'm not going to take that down too much at the moment, but I will get rid of some of the bulk around the beak area. It just begins to help to define the actual bird as well. If you sort of start to feel your knife might be getting blunt, just um, give it a strop. So a bit of cutting, polishing compound here. This is the green kind, which I quite like. It's fairly coarse, but it does the job nicely. This is just a bit of a like suede leather. You could use the um, nice grain side of an ordinary veg tan leather. and just give it a bit of a few passes along there. Again, being careful you don't catch your leg at all. <laughs> I would normally be doing this over a bench for added safety, so I wouldn't have it quite so close to my leg. 
but I just dropped that a few times and you can see that the strop itself is going slightly black. Well that's the metal off the knife so I know it's working quite well. And I'll do a bit more on this flatter edge. I just make these little strop boards up out of various bits of skirting board and other bits of offcut I have lying around. And you'll be amazed how a little bit of stropping and your knife really will come up very nicely. If you're a leather worker you probably do a lot of this and you'll know exactly what I mean. So that's ready back for action. A final trim round just to get rid of this bulk. Yeah, that's a bit better. And I think I'm fair. So I've got the outline roughly done there. What I'm going to do now is start rounding it and slimming it back at the tail. So you can get quite quick results doing this. Just take it back a bit and try and do the same sort of roughly each side. As I say, the beauty of this, you don't have to be super accurate. Start to take some off the body. So do the same. This particular piece of wood, I cut it quite close to the bark. So um, <laughs> I don't need to take off much that side. In fact, I need to take a bit more off, I think, that side. The knife's nice and sharp with that strop. Same here at the front. And just really, just keep thinking in your mind, well, what's a bird look like? Well, it's um, a little tiny round lump, isn't it? It doesn't have a square head, it has a rounded head. So just sort of think about it as you do it. Birds don't have necks. <laughs> I know, if you start looking at them, I have found myself looking far more intently at birds recently trying to get my little drawing roughly right and um, probably stating the obvious here but birds don't really have what we would normally see as a neck. Now being such a small thing it is, does get tricky so if you feel, see I'm keeping that blade well away from my knife and it's an, well away from my leg and it is all nice and sharp so it's actually a bit of added safety. I'm basically sort of in my mind thinking we'll get this all down so we get all the riven wood hidden and we just have carved wood only showing. So that's what I find is quite a good guide. Like that you know, you're, you know you've removed something from everywhere. And then just really every now and again I, I tend to stop and look at it and think oh you know is that looking birdie like? Do I need to take a bit more off somewhere? So I'm going to push my knife here, you see I've not got a lot of space. There we are. And that's why I quite like the shorter blade. All of it's personal obviously and you'll get some people saying oh get a, a knife with a, a long blade and do this but anyway you, you'll find your own way. The beak, I'm keeping it fairly thick until close to the end, but what I will do, just to sort of define the face, is start to go in where the beak is obviously in the middle there. So I can start to go towards that middle and that will help me see, see the bird's rounded outline of the face.
I need to put it on a bit of a dial still at the moment. If you still look down headways, it's too fat. So looking down the top from the top. But um, I'll, I'll carry on whittling. I'll take it down a bit there and slim it off. If you're not so keen on axing out blanks, you can just um, use the saw. So um, that can get quite a nice little quick blank right up to the line, which is quite useful. It's looking a bit slimmer now. And I thought for the tail, I'll just put like a little bit of a V in there. Try and make it look a little bit more like the two wings folding over. And one can extend the V underneath. I'm not trying to do anything sort of fancy here. It's just putting in the odd little bit of detail to sort of try and make it look a bit more bird-like. So that gives me a sort of tail effect there. And I've given a little bit of sort of up sweep underneath. I'm going to now change knives from this rough carving knife and just try and get this beak done. And I'm going to use a narrow blade knife because it's a bit better for getting the detail. So this knife it has a slimmer blade, similar sort of length, it's just slimmer, which means you can sort of do slightly tighter curves. So, for something like the beak area, where I want to try and get in here and define a beak, it's quite useful. But with this you can sort of like do a turning action. Every now and again just going to sort of check the side profile to make sure I'm sort of still picking up the character. Again obviously trying to look at it so from the underside as well and from the top to make sure one keeps everything sort of symmetrical. And as I get towards the point of that knife I really can go in and get the little finer curves that I want. The beak in a way for the blue tip I think is one of those strong defining points as it is particularly so sort of short but sharp. So I do a little bit more shaping around the head to try and make all of that blend in. And I'm not trying to sort of get this like a sanded finish. I'm accepting there's nice little whittling knife cuts all over it. They'll catch the light. And I mean, that's whittling to me. It's what gives something a bit of sort of like rustic folk character, it's rather nice. You see quite quickly there I've got a, a little stubby beak which um, is I think fairly blue tip like. So a little bit more sort of general cleaning up all over and I think it's sort of there but I think if you can still pick out one or two features you think for yourself defines the bird, be it the tail maybe the size of the body or the beak. There's some things which help. If you're a bird watcher, you can probably think of all sorts of things that I might not think of. So there's one more. Might be a better shape, actually. So that took me probably about 10 minutes. It's very quick. Once you get into your little stride with it, it really doesn't take very long. Well, just before I go, I thought I'd perhaps show you the complete process. I won't do any voiceover or anything. I'll just carve away and if you want to watch, you can. So I'll do it from start to finish. And you can see, it'll probably take about 10 minutes or so. You can see me carving the bird without missing out any steps at all. And you just get an idea of how nice it can be. So I'll do that now. Now this one I cut a bit fine. Um, so I've actually got the bark on this side. I think I'll get away with it just about. So just to show you the process really from start to finish. Without too many pauses, I will 
do this. I won't talk as I do it, I'll just do it and you can see, get an idea of how one can do it.
there you have it, a little one just quite quickly carved straight through. So I just thought I'd show you that, or oh, I haven't done the tail. <laughs> just to show you how easy it can be. There we are. Put it out for the tail. There's one more. Well, if you got to the end of that, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed seeing my little goes at bird carving. What I'll be doing in the next video is showing you, or at least the next video on carving, or whittling. Yeah, whittling really, isn't it? On the next video on the whittling, I will show you how I attach the legs and do the eyes and paint them, which is quite good fun as well and you end up some very attractive looking little birds. Okay then, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.